Hello and welcome back to this, the second part of our tutorial series where we're looking at volumetric lighting effects using Renderman Studio and Maya Fluence. So in the first part of this tutorial we got as far as making a Maya Fluid, Maya Fluid contents and used Renderman physically plausible lights to produce an image similar to this which gives you the effect of a room which is full of smoke or haze with light coming through it developing volumetric shadow within the fog. So the effect which we were actually going for originally was something similar to this scene from Blade Runner where we have beams of light coming from a roof light producing rays visible in fog. Now obviously in this the light's flooding in and part of that is because of the properties of physically plausible area lights as they stand in Renderman Studio 4. If we'd like to actually be able to focus the light slightly better, it's quite a trivial thing to do with a couple of different methods. Now the simplest method is what I would call a quick and dirty method. So here we have our area light up here. I'll just move our render window down here. So our area light is up here. And what I've done here is I've actually just created a very simple piece of geometry, which is a tube. So as we can imagine, in the real world, light will travel in all directions on the tube, but will only be able to escape through the aperture. If I go and re-render this now, we can actually see we're getting quite an effective beam of light. Now we can control the size and the spread of this by the aperture of the tube itself and also the length of the tube because the longer it is the less light will actually be traveling out at an angle from it. If I just stop this render for a second and we'll have a quick look at what's going on within here. So if you imagine the tube is longer the angle that light can escape is less. So I'll just show you now, make the pipe longer, so it's greater height. And if I go back to my previous view, which is view, previous view. Okay, and I'll just do a render now. Just even making the pipe longer affects the diameter of the beam. Okay, so it's useful. We can change the diameter also of the aperture, but there's various ways we can do this. Now, it's quite inelegant, um, and it produces results which are they're adequate, but not necessarily the, the preferred way of working. Let's have a look at a different way which we can do this. Let me just hide this display and hide selection. Okay. There are obviously ways within Renderman where this can actually be improved upon. If you have a look at some of the tutorials which preceded this, we were looking at light blockers. So if I create a light blocker, which selecting the area light, going down to the area light attributes, and right clicking in bound co-shaders, create RMS light blocker. All right. So what we're doing here is we're making a light blocker. Now it goes in in the center of our scene initially. Those things are actually put in in that location. So let me just move this. Just make sure I've got it selected. Light blocker. Okay, so I'm going to move it up. And I'm going to move it out, rotate it slightly, and scale it. Light blocker and scale. So currently it's working as a light blocker, and let's see the results which we get. seems to be blocking a lot of the light for us. So let me just move this slightly further down. Ah, we've actually got an error in here. It's actually got the textures going in there. Don't know why. That's been highlighted. This is a little glitch which I've seen before. So let me just go and move this slightly down and re-render. What we're seeing now is the light being blocked by this light blocker. 
So be careful of this. I've found it several times. My shortcut keys, when I go to actually move a rotator scale, sometimes it comes into the um, texture map here. Could be my bad, quite possibly is. So this is acting as a blocker. If I scale this down, we'll see the effect slightly less. We'll see it. We can see that the light's being blocked here, similar to a shading or shadow object. Okay, so light's getting through here and being blocked from down here. Now, apart from using it as a light blocker, we can also use this shape as a window. So to do that, let's change over to window. If I try re-render, the result which we'll get is blank. The reason for this, as explained in the previous tutorial, is for window we need to actually change the filter color all the way back up to white so the window is transparent and now let's go and re-render so this is actually a much more elegant way of dealing with producing a ray of light we can just change the um, the size of this we can scale it in various different directions scale it down that way so we can focus light very very accurately and it actually cuts down on the amount of work which random itself has to do so let me just rotate this around slightly again selecting our blocker when we get a chance okay and rotate this And there is another advantage to it. We can use a texture map. Now, be aware that when we're putting a texture map in, the way which we have to do it is we have to actually put in TX Make, which is telling Renderman to make a texture which it understands. So to do this, right-click, create TX Make, opens up another window. We put in an input file, which in this case, I want to be working from source images and you see this window which is a Harry Clark um, stained glass window okay so we're putting this in here and let me just change the size of this again so go back to our blocker and scale it scale it up a bit more okay now when I do a re-render it's rendering, but a lot of the light is actually being blocked. We're getting some light coming through here. So what I'm going to have to do here is dramatically increase the output of this light. There may be other ways to work with it. I'm not sure, but this is a way which I find works best. Again, tweaking the edge color or the edge softness doesn't have much of an effect here, marginally. So what I'm going to have to do is increase the output of this light. Um, as it stands at the moment, I think it's probably at about um, factor of 10, possibly less. Finish the render. Okay, let's see what the light output is. Or I'm a serial light. So, its intensity is 10. If I put this intensity up to about 14 and do a re-render, remember these are logarithmic. So we're getting a very interesting result here now. We're getting the effect of this stained glass window being focused from the light and producing something quite interesting. Now this could be also used for stuff, for instance, like um, the actual pattern which you get within torch beams. We can also use animated textures for this. So we'll leave this tutorial here. Um, I'll just rotate this slightly more to get a slightly better effect here. Go to our light, light blocker, and I'd like it to be focused a little bit more onto our, our sphere. One more quick render and see how this looks. I've got a couple of more tips and tricks which we can actually do with volumetrics, which I'll show you in the next tutorial. I think actually what I'll do here is I'll move this this light somewhat because the two of these have a relationship to each other. So let me go to the area light 
and let's rotate this. And try re-rendering. One final try, I'll move it down slightly. So there is always with all these kind of lighting effects, there's a bit of tweaking to be done here and there. Let me move it down, do a re-render, and hopefully this will give me the effect which I'm looking for. Yes, this is much more like it. So you can see we're getting a nice variation within it. Um, we're possibly over illuminating this slightly, but it's producing an interesting looking effect. Okay, leaving it here for the moment, come back to you shortly with some more tutorials and thank you very much for your time and attention.